Okay, welcome to the June 4th regular meeting of Town of Nequa. Uh First item of business is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions or deletions to the agenda? If not, be it resolved that we approve the regular meeting agenda for June 4th, 2024, moved by Councillor Nadeau, seconded by Councillor Pottinger. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, you will also have had the minutes sent out. And uh, be it resolved that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting held May 21st, 2024, circulated, moved by Councillor Kostinchuk, seconded by Councillor Gerard. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we've got a few minutes here, so um, maybe we'll take uh, the councillor's report. Councillor Nadeau. Very short one tonight, some good news to share. Uh, we have hired a new librarian, so we'd like to welcome Caitlin Henderson. She's a, a fully trained and qualified librarian with librarian education background which is hard to find and she's actually looking after the, the whole library system I believe in the PAW currently and she'll be coming in mid-July so we look forward to our new librarian in, in the town coming here I think she's been in, in the PAW area for eight years now so so we're very fortunate uh, the whole region is actually very excited because she's going to add extra extra support to their whole region so really good news to share. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Okay, Deputy Mayor Parrott. Well, we got this. Well, I guess it, <clears throat> it was a privilege to attend the Economic Developers Association of Manitoba Awards Gala last week in Portage Prairie on behalf of Town Council. The event was attended by many dedicated community-minded individuals who advocate for their communities each and every day. The Nequa Training Center project received the 2024 Economic Developers Association of Manitoba Project of the Year for any projects over $100,000. Uh, this award is for a project that demonstrates significant impact to a community and region. It was an honor to be selected from five worthy applicants across Manitoba. The training center was recognized as an excellent example of sustainable way to support local individuals looking for education and as a result, improve our community as a whole. And special thanks go for, goes to our wonderful town staff who were highly involved in the demolition, preparation of the building outside of their normal scope of duties and for our office staff for working directly with the architects, the engineers, contractors to ensure quality work and liaison with ACC and having the project to be completed on time and for our planning office for diligently working with all the above throughout the whole stage and making it happen. Thank you. That's very good. Thanks, Murray. Okay, um, I guess we're pretty much at that time. Then we'll move into our public hearing. <coughs> Be it resolved that we do no now open this public hearing at 7.05 to hear representation to variation application VO2-2024 of Scott McDonald, moved by. Councillor Kostachuk, uh, seconded by Councillor Sisley. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, I think our Scott is going to be talking <laughs> for Scott. Uh, so the application number for this uh, file is V02-2024N. 
The current owner and applicant is uh, Scott McDonald. The variation proposed is to increase the maximum permitted accessory structure size from the required 12% of the total site area or 900 square feet, whichever is lesser, to the proposed 1,280 square feet within the ARR, which is the agricultural restricted zone. The current area affected is uh, 291 Hurl Road, Lot 1, Plan 59805. And the reason we would be in support of it for our office is to allow for the construction of a 32 by 40 D stretch accessory structure within the ARR zone. Uh, notices have been uh, circulated according to the neighboring property owners, and we have not received any comments or concerns towards the property. Um, this variation essentially would allow for the maximum uh, number of structures allowed on the property uh, from 900 or 12%, whatever is lesser, to the maximum of uh, 1,280. So there would be no more uh, detached accessory structures to be allowed within the property. Are there any other similar situations in the whole player? Yes. There is at least uh, three within the, within the 100 meter buffer actually around the property. Not that it affects anything, but Scott McDonald, just how high are you going with that? What's that? How high, how tall are you going with that? Um, I think it's 12 feet tall. Yeah. And it's 10 foot below. Any other questions? Just for personal use, Scott? Yes, it's just for personal use, yes. Okay. If there's no other questions, then be it resolved that we do now adjourn this public hearing at 7.07. Moved by Deputy Mayor Parrott, seconded by Councillor Nadeau. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Okay, now I'll ask uh, Allison Young if she would move up here and talk to us a little bit about property assessment service. Yeah, here's good. <laughs> So my name is Alton Young, and I'm an assessor out of the Portage office. And what I passed out here, there's two pamphlets attached to the front. I have um, stacks of those here that I'm meeting for you guys as well. Uh, the first one is my property now. You can sign up to get all of your assessment information online instead of paper. So there's that, and then just the regular reassessment pamphlet that goes out every year. And then at the very back is a copy of the assessment notice that goes out to all of your ratepayers. And then this part I will be going through the impact of our 2025 reassessment. So for 2025, the assessed value of all properties will be updated to April 1st, 2023 market values. Uh, previously, it was April 1st, 2021. Property assessments were last updated in 2023. The new updated assessments will be used for 2025 property taxes. The province's taxable assessment has increased by $13.2 billion, or 13%. Your municipality's taxable assessment has increased by 16 million or 7%. Uh, so on page two, on the lower part, you can see the changes to your municipality's taxable assessment. So total residential is going up 5.1%. Farms saw an increase of 14.2%. 
and commercial and industrial 10.4%. So overall you saw a 6.8% increase. Assessment increases and decreases resulting from reassessment don't necessarily mean tax increases or decreases. Property assessments are simply providing the basis for distributing taxes among the property owners. If you flip to page four, we have another chart here. So this table illustrates how property taxes in each class are affected for 2025. Now this information is assuming the same budgetary needs as 2023. That's the last information we have when this was created. Um, so this is municipal and school taxes together. So residential would see on average a 3.5% decrease, farm a 4.8% increase, and commercial or industrial 0.5% increase. So on the very bottom you can see 86% of people would actually see a decrease. Um, only 2% would see an increase of greater than 10% in $100, and 12% would see increases of less than 10% or $100. Again, that's based on 2023 budget. On page 5, this shows uh, just the municipal levy. And so total residential would see a 1.6% decrease, farm a 6.9% increase, and commercial industrial a 3.4% increase. So what this is saying is properties with an assessment increase of less than 6.8% would see a municipal tax decrease and assessments with an increase greater than 6.8% would see an increase. Again, assuming that same budget. <laughs> Uh, page six is some options if you wanted to moderate the impacts of reassessment. If you wanted more, any more information, if you wanted to look into that, you would need to contact the MSO. Page seven has a bit more information on the provincial property tax reduction as they're changing that again this year and again the following year, I believe. Uh, one other thing I wanted to go through, right now we are proposing changing the way pipeline is assessed. Um, it hasn't been approved or gone through or anything like that. Um, it is just being talked about at this point. Um, for the town of Mipoa, the change, um, if it were to change to the new way, is a decrease of 0.1%, so it would be very minimal. Um, effect for you guys. Alright. I'm supposed to remind you of your open house day here. Okay, you guys have an open house on July 4th at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For anybody that has concerns, if you do get people coming into the office though, you can just have them call our office and we will can deal with it at any time. And I also wanted to remind you of your appeal deadline. I'm sorry. I have it written down and the dates are blank. <laughs> is, it on, is it in the brochure? Uh, appeal deadline is November 4th. And the board of revision is November 19th at 6 p.m. Any questions? I know I went through that really quick, but... Open house is located where? Here. <coughs> yeah, the town office. Just a question. Um, to, you know, Nico has seen such rapid growth in new buildings coming. 
Roughly how long does it take for a new building uh, to make it to an assessment with, with it? Uh, does it? Is it a six month period? Is it eight? You know? Once it's complete, um, it honestly depends a little bit on when it gets completed, just because of our, right. our work schedule um, when we get our work done. But once it's complete, so if it got completed now, for example, it would get picked up this year. And then, because uh, because when we're updating our assessments right now, we're updating 2025. So we would add it now for 2025 and then send an adjustment for that portion of 2024. Okay. If it wasn't finished until a few months from now, and so we didn't come back and get it until next year, then it would get added next year for 2026. And then we would make the adjustment for part of 2024 and all of 2025. Okay. Okay. So we can always go back the, the two years. Okay. No, I'm just curious, like what that time is, you know, completed, and, and how that impacts, you know, how it impacts it hitting our books. So. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Are you guys fully staffed yet that you can mm -hmm. actually <laughs> keep up with all your workloads these days? And made it open? No. <laughs> Who is responsible for equal work? Right? So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this is going. <laughs> Which is why an assessment officer reported. Is <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Portage is close to fully staffed, so we come and help. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, if there's no more questions, thank you, Allison. Appreciate you I coming. I can see these here. Yeah, sure. sure yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Will you be the one coming back for the open house? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I believe um, Brandon Mansell is coming. Okay. I think. It might end. Somebody will be. Somebody will be. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, continuing on, did we have any more council reports? Uh, Councilor um, So there's quite a bit with recreation economic development. Uh, the pool is open for the season. Season passes are on sale for it. Uh, our rec director received a grant from the Beautiful Plains Community Foundation to get a new water accessible wheelchair. It is a completely submersible wheelchair that can help people with limited mobility get in the water so that they can still participate in lessons or aquafit. Uh, this weekend on Saturday, uh, we have the Manitoba Qualifier for the Manitoba Summer Games, the bike races out at the uh, Back 40. It is for under 13 and under 15 uh, year olds. You must register ahead of time. There will be no registrations taken that morning. It's because everything is online because it is through uh, the Manitoba Summer Games process. Uh, if you do want to get registered, if you can contact Nicole Cooper at the town office at recreation at neepwad.ca. Day camp is filling up fast. 60% is full for most weeks. So Nicole's asking if anybody is wanting to get their kids in to register right away so that you're not disappointed on your weeks if you don't get it. June is participation month. So Nicole has given me a calendar here. She's got a whole pile of stuff uh, that she got set up through her grant and with the participation month um, if you're participating in these activities for the month you get so many entries and there's an apple watch and she's got some cool uh, mugs and stuff to give away as well that you can enter for Canada's Canada Day schedule will be coming out shortly. Uh, she figures within the next week or so. We are still, and I did say this every council meeting leading to Canada Day, I'd be mentioning volunteers. We are still looking for volunteers from 4 to 9 p.m. Uh, that could be just helping out with the bouncy castles. It could be helping with parking. Um, you don't have to work from 4 to 9. Even if you want to work an hour, we would take just about anything at this point to get some volunteers down there. She has come up with a really cool idea for what's called a duck dive. Instead of the duck races, you buy a duck and we're dumping them in the pool. And then we're going to have one of our lifeguards dive in and whatever duck they come up with will win the 50-50 on that. So kind of a cool thing. Neepwad Tourism has created a historic walking tour on their website. So if you want to visit neepwadtourism.ca, you can explore their interactive map for their walking tour. 
They also wanted to uh, thank everybody that came out to support the Chamber Fair. Even though there was snow on Friday, it was cats on Friday, they did actually get a very good turnout for Saturday and Sunday, so uh, they did quite well with that. And Nipua Habitat for Humanity, um, they will be having a meeting. Um, it's a very important one. It's about the family selection process uh, for the Habitat Home. <coughs> it's Monday, uh, June 17th at 7 p.m. at the CEC building uh, of the United Church. And she did give me a poster just to show everybody. So this one's an important one. So anybody that's interested, if they can come out to that one. And there is one other thing, if I can quickly talk about it, sorry. Um, so the Town of Nipua, Arts Forward, and Beautiful Plains School Division have partnered together. Uh, we got an Indigenous artist, local Indigenous artist, Megan Peters, to do a design for an orange shirt. Uh, the proceeds from this as a fundraiser will go towards paying for the Indigenous Culture Day on September 27th. The shirts do have to be ordered by June 20th, though. Uh, and then we'll get them all in September, so, yeah. That's the last one. Good. Thank you. Okay. Was there any others? Murray, did you want to speak to Public Works Committee? Um, I'm a resolution on that. Yeah, I'll speak to the Okay. Well, uh, we mentioned it last meeting, but because of the pothole situation in town, we've redeployed a lot of our budgeted items for major projects to uh, repairing our streets. And so Mill Street and Hamilton will be getting uh, a bit of that money. So our puke truck has arrived. You'll see our staff using the puke truck. And we'll be starting to fill these potholes and do- Maybe explain what that is. <laughs> Puke truck is when you drink a lot of it. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so puke, puke truck is it's the big long elephant hose which mixes the gravel and the oil based tar into the hole and it dries up and solidifies and it basically waterproofs and fixes the bottle. And everything will go smoothly unless it rains. And then if it rains, we have to wait till they dry. Just to touch on, like historically, the last number of years, we pulled that truck in for about a week at a time, and this year, council committed to a month of renting that. So, um, we've heard, I think we've heard the public's concerns, and we've driven over the same concerns that the public has, and we've tried to shift budget accordingly to make sure it's a priority. Yes, unfortunately, we uh, we all enjoyed the nice uh, warm winter, but uh, it certainly showed up on the damage it could do. So we're doing everything that we can to uh, to remedy that. Okay, um, our manager of operations, Denise, is away today. Um, there's no report. Um, yeah, I was just going to speak to the similar things that okay. the, the truck has arrived. We've trained three staff in the running of that particular catcher or puker truck now. Um, we just, as mentioned, we've got it in the past in prior years and came with an operator. So because we're keeping it for the full month, we had staff trained and we're going to try and keep them up there as best we can and, and enjoy the length of the days, you know, between rains if they continue to rain. Um, as far as our wastewater treatment plants, they are at the point now where they're actually taking the meat and filling the basin up there. So we're getting a little closer to uh, being able to get things up and running. And um, yeah, I guess that's the summary. We probably noticed those have been to the pool. We have uh, laid down concrete, pulled out all the paving stones, and then there's pads of concrete all around there now. Uh, yeah, the rust was coming up around there. That's good. The rust was kind of touched on, I think. So that's good. Okay, thank you. Correspondence, <clears throat> touch wood, touch wood uh, Park Association. Uh, so the Touchwood Park is having their annual charity golf tournament and this marks the 28th year. It will be held on July 29th at the Neekwall Golf and Country Club and there will be a banquet following at the Yellowhead Centre. Proceeds are going this year to the Accessible Playground Project. And they're looking for the town support for the 2024 tournament. We have normally given, uh, you know, a token item would be a four-piece jackets last year for the tournament. 
and there, they would take almost any donation, or, or you could participate in the sponsorship levels anywhere from $150 up to $500 and over. So if you're, you're interested in donating again, but they also <coughs> want to know if you want to put in a team. $100 per person to actually play. You can have a council team in the golf terms. Whatever you think. No golfers in this table? I'm already working in a tournament, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've heard of golf. <laughs> oh, I would like to go. Oh, but I've heard of golf. So. Do you want to think about it and get yeah. back to me? Yeah. And we, um, we will consider uh, support of some sort. We'll discuss that in house and compare it to other years. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, on to finance. Uh, you've all received the financial statement uh, end of April, uh, April 30th. <clears throat> so uh, the motion reads be a result that we approve the financial statement for the month ended April 30th, 2024. Moved by. Uh, Councillor Gerard, seconded by uh, Councillor Pottinger. Any questions on that? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, for accounts, we have accounts, uh, our regular accounts. Be it resolved that we approve the accounts for May 2024, totaling $1,432,041.39 as reviewed and representing check. 20240064 to 20240827 excluding 20240718 moved by deputy mayor Parrott, seconded by councillor nadeau all in favor opposed carried okay. councillor gerard removes for conflict Be it resolved that we approve check 20240718 for May 24th home hardware totaling $1,362.98. Moved by Councillor Cross and Chuck, seconded by Councillor Ponger. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, licensing fees, Colleen. So this is an annual resolution you um, prepare and pass based on bylaw number 3032. When you have a mobile home park, you have to uh, give sufficient notice under the uh, landlord and tenant legislation when you alter rents. So technically these are rents as much as their license fees payable here. So we're asking you to um, adopt a resolution for an increase of 2.52% uh, for the licensing of mobile homes in the form. Okay, any questions? Councillor Gerard? That just keeps things in line similar to where we saw property taxes for the landowners. Right? Yes. It's not a extra fee on those people, it's just keeping in line to match what residents have done. Yeah, homes. I should maybe mention that. It, it, because we do have to set for a year coming, so we don't know the mill rate, so we're, we're you know, obligated to use the years that we do have in place. So we look at the two years and match it against any increases we have locally for um, properties that actually are under the assessment rule. Okay. Be it resolved, we approve the increase of 2.52% to the mobile homes licensing fees for 2025 under the authority of bylaw number 3032. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Parrott, seconded by Councillor Kostinchuk. Any questions? <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Colleen, was there any unfinished business? None. No. Okay, new business. So we have the approval of the, uh, the application um, that we just heard earlier on the McDonald property. Is there any further questions on that? 
If not, be it resolved that we approve variation application V022024 of Scott McDonald uh, respecting lot one, representing lot one, plan 59805 at 291 Hurl Road to increase the maximum permitted size of an accessory structure for the required 12% of the total site area or 90 square feet, which is lesser, to the proposed 1,280 square feet to allow for the construction of a 32 by 40 detached accessory structure in the ARR agriculture restricted zone. Um, move. Sorry. Now move by. I'm just questioning is that supposed to be 900 square foot or is it 90? Oh, sorry, sorry 900. Okay. Sorry. Friendly amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good catch, Councillor. 900 square feet. Yeah, to the proposed 1280. Okay. Moved by Deputy Mayor Parrott. Seconded by Councillor Sisley. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. So, uh, two weeks ago we talked about. Um, Denise talked about the back truck that, uh, that our guys were looking at. Colleen, did you have anything else to add on that? Uh, so yes, in the budget we actually prepared for the purchase of a back truck and we uh, budgeted the greater than $700,000 it would require to pay for one, uh, split between general operating and utility. Um, we sourced out two different trucks, there's very uh, minimal companies that can do this and then uh, you also have to look at the fact you could be subject to getting one bill which takes a lot of time. So Westpac Industrial actually had a unit that they were able to bring out here and uh, let us demo. Um, we really liked the unit and based on the necessity of our current truck and not having the ability to perform work for us necessarily anymore, we're kind of under a time crunch. If we could maybe uh, go to the other, you know, demo the other truck as well, it wouldn't be ready in time. Um, so we decided that we would recommend to Council, based on what we've seen, that we purchase the uh, back on St. Helens Conway unit from West Back Industrial for $798,550 plus tax. Say it fast, it's a little amount of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's interesting that, um, you know, out of all the equipment that uh, certainly, certainly our guys were, were getting fairly concerned about the age and the amount of use. Uh, that past one. Well, we spent a lot of repair money in the last few yeah. years on that one. And not just the repair money, it was the fees we were paying to yeah. hire contractors yeah. to bridge that gap while they don't mm -hmm. work it down. And, uh, you know, this is a prime example. If we didn't have a chronic plug to sewer situation, <laughs> maybe that yeah. truck might have lasted a little longer. But high usage is. High usage, yes. Yeah. Just to the public, you might say, why aren't you buying used? Uh, that's kind of the trouble we had with the last truck. It's, it was good out of the gate, and then the, the investment in repairs, and like uh, Councillor Gerard said, you know, bringing in supplementary service from uh, contractors that um, bite the bullet and buy something. Yeah. And this is something we can't go without. We have no. to have it. Not anymore. And someone's having a sewer leakage. Yeah. Residents really need that. Yeah. Okay, your motion reads be it resolved that we approve the purchase of Backpon 12 YD single engine combination sewer truck from West Back Industrial Limited in the amount of $798,550 plus tax. Moved by Councillor Sisley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Parrott. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. I did try very hard to make him take the return trip with the old truck, but he didn't seem very interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, 
So you have a property calling? Uh, so in February we sold lot 3, plan 62361 or 400 Allen Street to uh, an individual and since then, uh, just based on circumstances, we were unable to conclude the sale. Uh, so we have had quite a bit of interest in the last uh, few months since we have uh, offered that for sale to that individual and we have, to, uh, because of the passing of time and the interest we have in receiving, we are asking and recommending based on getting a hold of the previous guy and not being able to conclude that we proceed with a different purchaser tonight. Okay, any questions? Motion reads, whereas resolution number 2024-21 dated February 6, 2024, agreed to sell lot three, plan 62361 to Gabriel Minolt, uh, subject to the terms of the development agreement, and whereas the town has been unable to make any progress in concluding the sale, Whereas by passing, by the passing of four months, the town wishes to proceed in selling the lot to the next interest, as interested purchaser. Therefore, be it resolved that uh, proposed sale under resolution 20247-21 be declared null and void, and that the town proceed with the sale of lot three, plan 62361, roll 83270 at 400 Elm Street, the Jim and Sherry Phillip truck for $45,000 subject to the terms of the de development agreement. Moved by Councillor Gerard, seconded by Deputy Mayor Parrott. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, um, Colleen, I guess we've kind of talked about uh, paving, but anything so, else to add? Uh, not really. As Deputy Mayor uh, Parrott uh, referenced, we, um, since the spring we had and, and the condition of the streets out there, we actually looked at um, the, the two of the worst in the commercial district being the stretch of pavement from uh, Mountain Avenue over to First on Hamilton and the same length of pavement for that block going from Mountain to Mill or Mountain on Mill Street sorry uh, so the codes have actually that just recently came in to do the Mill Street block it's only one block it's $187,959 plus GST and do that block on Hamilton it's $175,429 plus GSP. This is just to do paving. This does not take into account as we've preached for years now. It's nice when you pave a street to actually do all of the water and sewer infrastructure underneath because then you take away the risk of cutting up your street right away to, you know, unblock a sewer or redo a line, a water line or whatever the case may be. Uh, based on the condition of those two particular sections of the street in the commercial district and the use of the gap, we decided we're just going to proceed with the paving. The afford shift on those hopefully um, it would be a very pleasing result when we're done. Uh, we don't know the timing as yet. Uh, we've been told they, are, they will be coming, you know, hopefully before summer. But as we all know, we're at, uh, you know, their mercy for whenever they show up in your community. So, but I'm asking for approval tonight to redirect our budgets to doing these two sections of the streets. Okay, any other questions? Very clear. I just want to comment that it's a you know it's a three hundred and sixty thousand dollar adjustment in how budgetary spending has happened and really want to thank the the committee and administration for pivoting on this because it's something that we had to see within the town. Um, it's those are very hot and busy streets and but and to the community when you say, you know, updating and upgrading roads, when you see that $360,000 only touches a four inch surface on two blocks, you can understand the magnitude to start doing massive amounts of infrastructure spending in the community as well. Yeah. Oh, excellent point. Okay, be it resolved that we accept the quotations of Zenith paving to install new asphalt on those portions of Mill Street and Hamilton Street from First Avenue to Mountain Avenue in the amount of 187,959 plus GST for Mill Street and 175,429 plus GST for Hamilton Street. 
Moved by Councillor Sisley, seconded by Councillor Nadeau. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Peter Colleen? I'm going to remove myself on this. Okay. Perceived conflict. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councillor Gerard removes himself for perceived conflict. So this is a uh, rent agreement. We actually, with the number of staff we have in the areas of the community growing a little bit more with the bike park and where we have to travel and the fact that we don't have a truck for everybody. Uh, we've done this before in the past. We're actually um, recommending to council that we rent the services of the Gator for $1,400 a month for the months of June, July, and August. And of course, June will run a little now into September because of uh, when we actually should secure lots. Yeah, any questions? It's a lot of area to get around on. Okay, be it resolved that, be it resolved that uh, we approve the rental of the 2023 John Deere Gator 835E for the months of June, July, and August at a cost of $1,400 per month plus tax. Moved by. Councillor Potter, seconded by Councillor Kostachuk. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, Colleen, bylaws. <coughs> so the next two items on your agenda are bylaws 3207-21 and 3215-22. Uh, so under the Municipal Act, previous readings of a proposed bylaw are rescinded if the proposed bylaw does not receive third reading within two years after first reading or is defeated on second or third reading. So the town currently have these two bylaws that have not proceeded to third reading, both of which are well beyond the two year time frame. To proceed to third reading, the property owners were required to enter into development agreements with the town uh, that would set forth terms for the development of those particular properties to which they applied as supported under Section 150 of the Planning Act. To date, we have not been able to proceed with finalizing those agreements and the interest has waned. Uh, so for bylaw 3207-21, it was proposed to amend the zoning of lots 1 and 2, plan 6081 from light industrial to residential mobile modular home zone for the purpose of creating a modular home park. And this, in more particular, is 47 acres that was previously known as the Hoffman property and it's west of the public works yard. Uh, bylaw 3215, oh sorry, it was given first reading on October 5th, 2021, second reading on November 16th, 2021. Bylaw 3215 22, it proposed to amend the zoning for parcel 1, plan 5695, parcel 3, plan 5847, and parcel 8, plan 5428 from light industrial to residential multi unit zone for the purpose of instructing multi unit residential buildings. And this one sits to the west of uh, West Park uh, Mobile Home Park. It was given first reading on April 5th, 2022, and second reading on May 17th, 2022. So while these bylaws would be deemed rescinded based on the two year time frame that it expired, administration would like to formally defeat each bylaw. This will provide clarity within the town's historical records where we can actually enter the date of June 4th as a defeat on third reading. And this would allow all parties, including the planning district and the provincial community and regional planning office to officially close these files. And I say this because the resolutions that get followed up and get sent into the community and regional planning office uh, and they can close their file where if we just call it rescinded and do nothing, um, we would never actually notify that office. So the recommendation is that the next two resolutions for bylaws 3207 and 3215 on this agenda be formally and officially defeated. Had we passed these two bylaws with the third reading, that would not give the town of Equal control to um, have a development agreement with possible people coming in to make plans. So this way we can actually provide proper control for the next developer coming in. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so the motion reads, be it resolved that bylaw number 3207-21 be in a bylaw of the town of Neepwa to amend the zoning of lots one and two, plan 6081 from ML industrial light zone 
to RMH Residential Mobile Modular Home Zone be now read for the third time and passed. This is a recorded vote for those in favor. Opposed? And that motion is defeated. Okay, on to the next resolution. Be it resolved that bylaw number 3215-22 be in the bylaw of the town of Nipua to amend the zoning of parcel parcel 1 plan 5695, parcel 3 plan 5847 and parcel A plan 5428 from ML industrial light zone to RM2 residential multi-unit zone 2 be now read for a third time and passed. Again this is a recorded vote. Those in favor? Opposed? In Oh, I did not. Moved. Okay, sorry. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Parrott. Seconded by. Councilor George. George. Councilor George. Okay, those for, those against. Okay, and that is defeated. Somebody's getting old. Do we need a mover for the second one then? Sure. We just did that. The first one. We didn't have a mover in the second or the first one. I'm not quite sure you're right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Must be getting near the end of the night. Other business. <laughs> Okay, any other questions, concerns? If not, be it resolved that the Council of Town of Nippon do now adjourn this meeting at 747. Moved by Councillor Kostinchuk, seconded by Councillor Bonker. All in favor? Opposed? Carried.